Hey guys, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Coming at you again, we have a quick speed tip today in VBA. We were asked recently, hey, how do you actually take however many names are in column A or column whatever, and we want to dynamically create a new sheet for each of them using the name of that person in each uh, in each cell. So for example, this would dynamically uh, jump up to row 7 and know that 7 is the last row, and it would also uh, know that we're going to start at 2, so 2 all the way to 7. It would create a sheet called Dan, a sheet called Tom. It would not actually select these cells, but it would create one for each of these people. So we're going to show you how to do that and show you a few tips along the way as well. If you're stepping along with me, we're going to hit Alt F11 on a Windows computer. On a Mac, that would be Option F11 or Function Option F11 to open the Visual Basic Editor. Now, I've already created my module. Uh, by clicking here and going to module. So inside my module, by double clicking there, I'm going to type sub for sub procedure and we'll call this one, we'll just call it new sheet per name, something like that. And hit enter a little bit. Now the first thing we need to do is dynamically get the last row and I do already have a video or two on the subject so uh, I'll, I can post a link for that but I'm not going to go over this too awful much. I'm going to create a variable called last row and then I'm going to have that be equal to this workbook dot sheets and then I'm going to use the sheet one is the name of the sheet and I'm going to use the cells object rows dot count in column one and I'm going to use the dot end to get the uh, control up feature using XL up that's not a one that's XL up not X one up dot row okay all that to say I am dynamically obtaining the last row number which is seven so if you're stepping along I'm gonna hit F8 key uh, if you're on a Mac you can use command shift I to step through now let's run this line here if I hit F8 or command shift I on a Mac it will show me that I successfully got the last row which is the number seven which if we look over here that looks right to me so the next thing we need to do now that we've obtained the last row and we can dynamically update that every time we run this macro we can create a quick for next loop so for X is going to be equal to two remember starting on row two all the way to what I'm going to what's my last row well it's actually a variable called last row so I'm gonna go from two to seven in this case but if we had more rows um, it would dynamically go from two to whatever that number is and I'm gonna put next X or next uh, th this means to start the loop over alright I promised a speed tip so I'm gonna speed this up so what we're gonna do is we're going to say every time there is a new X or a new row we need to do some steps we need to create a new sheet and then we need to actually update the name of that sheet so here's what we're gonna do the first step is we're gonna say this workbook dot sheets dot add tab and if I hit a space bar I do see some extra options here I could choose you know what sheet I'm going to have it be before or what sheet I'm going to have it be after we're not going to get into that too awful much however I could show you let's say a lot of people might want to have it uh, to be at the very beginning in which case I would say uh, before sheet zero but uh, more common is actually uh, requested after colon equals so they want it to appear after the very rightmost sheet so what I would do is I'm going to say sheets and what index is it? Well, I, I can't always say sheet number two because after I add one, this will not be the rightmost sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to say sheets.count because that, if I hover over it, automatically knows that currently there are two sheets. So appear after sheet number two. But then after I created a new sheet, uh, that number would be three and four and so on. Now, I'll show you what that looks like, and then I'm going to delete that sheet really quick. So let's go back up to our loop. So X is uh, nothing right now, but if I hit F8, X is 2. Now, we haven't used X yet. That's the row number that we need. Don't worry about it. We're going to add that in just a moment. So first thing we're going to do is we have to make sure that this part works. So this workbook.sheets.add, and we want to add that sheet after sheet number 2. So let's look down there and see what happens. If I hit F8 or Command-Shift-I, here we go. So it did add one, and it's actually sheet four because I added a sheet three earlier and deleted it. It still kept the naming convention for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and delete this one uh, because we're not exactly 
quite done. Alt F11 or function F, uh, excuse me, option F11 on the Mac. So I actually want to uh, do a little bit more to this sheet. I could say active sheet dot name equals you know the current row on, on whatever, uh, but I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to actually set a nickname for the current sheet. So I'm going to say set. I'll just call this cur worksheet or cur ws. We want to set that object variable equal to this work dot sheets dot add. And let's see, I might need to actually put these parameters in parentheses now because I have an equal sign going on here. Yes, I did need that parameter uh, parentheses here. So we're going to set this. So now anytime in the future, if I refer to cur ws, it automatically knows it's that new sheet that I added. So this way I can actually affect it using my new nickname. That's a little bit more effective for me. So if I hit, go back up here by dragging this arrow, x is equal to 2 again. We're going to set cur ws equal to this work dot sheets dot add. I can't say that today. And uh, it's going to add it to the very right. Okay. But then we can still refer to cur ws and do stuff with it. So I could say cur ws dot name equals, um, in fact, we happen to know that x is 2 right now. So couldn't we use the cells object to say row 2 or row x is what we want the name Dan to be or the, the name of the sheet to be? So we could say, uh, we could call it, we could refer to the sheet name of sheet 1, which is right here. Or we could say this workbook.sheets and we could say sheet 1. So we're talking about that sheet using cells row x comma and what column do we want yeah it's in column a or column one so if I uh, I don't think it'll show me if I hover over here but as we go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and hit F8 or command shift I on a Mac and we've now created a nickname for the current new sheet that we just added now we don't want it to say sheet 5 we want it to be equal to on sheet 1 the row 2 in column a which is Dan, as we know. So the name for that nicknamed uh, new sheet is going to be that. If I hit F8 or Command Shift I, ready, bam. So as you can see down there, it just changed the word Dan. And now we're getting somewhere. Now if I hit F8, X is going to be three, and I can do the same thing. Let's add a new sheet and make it equal to that uh, that object variable. So F8, and uh, this is now row three. X is now three. So now that will put the uh, in the name Tom and so on Sarah new sheet Tim new sheet Bill there's one more Pracha and now the loop is over literally that is all we had to do I know that's uh, several steps and uh, I said it was gonna be a quick tip but I had to throw in some extra uh, details so you could learn some cool stuff anyway uh, if you have any further questions please hit me up in the comment section don't forget uh, to like and subscribe and uh, check out ExcelVBAIsFun.com. We actually just majorly sped up the website, so it's flowing a lot better. There's a lot of cool articles and products and good stuff. For those of you who love to control Excel and automate your workflow and make it do your work for you. All right, we'll see you in the next video. God bless you all.